thanks. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here in this global forum. I'm a medical oncologist in New York, and I will give you perspectives on indications of uh, VEGF inhibition in our uh, esophageal and gastric cancer. So in terms of VEGF inhibition, the way that we can think about it is the, you know, it's a transmembrane receptor, and we, ha we can inhibit the ligand, which is a VEGF A ligand uh, inhibition by bevacizumab. And for the, uh, for the brevity of this talk, I won't share the data on bevacizumab, but suffice it to say, uh, it's uh, it's uh, the Avagas study in first line setting. Although there were some interesting subgroup analysis, overall was a negative study. And bevacizumab is not indicated in treatment of esophageal or gastric adenocarcinomas. Other drugs on the market, and the majority of the talk will be centered around targeting VEGF receptor through a binding of the monoclonal antibody to the external domain of the VEGF R2 with a drug called ramucirumab, which is a monoclonal antibody. And there are newer drugs, our recent uh, uh, presentations for targeting this uh, receptor in uh, intracellular domain by small molecule inhibitors such as apatinib, uh, which is a uh, Chinese uh, uh, trial approach, or ragorafenib, which is um, uh, a dirty inhibitor that uh, inhibits VEGFR2, uh, but also other uh, uh, growth factor receptors, PDGF, FGFR. And lastly, a flibercept is another form of targeting a ligand, which uh, VEGF trap, which is also, there's data in colorectal cancer, but uh, for the purposes of the talk, we will mostly focus on remisurumab mm -hmm. and, uh, and some bevacizumab data in combination with other agents. So the REGARD study, ramucirumab, uh, is uh, uh, the phase three study that get, got this drug on the market, and this was a randomized study in two-to-one fashion against placebo. You know, the, the design of this trial uh, was implemented prior to definitive evidence that uh, uh, in second-line therapy, chemotherapy had uh, proven benefit, and so in a modern uh, trial design, certainly randomization against placebo would not be advised. Uh, but regardless, this was a two-to-one uh, randomization, and patients were heavily uh, selected. Uh, the patients with large amount of peritoneal disease or symptomatic tumors or cancers that uh, were bleeding were excluded from these studies. So when you're applying this data in clinical practice, you should keep that in mind. Certainly. It may not apply to your regular, you know, a large uh, volume disease patient who presents unable to eat uh, and with symptoms of peritoneal carcinomatosis. So with monotherapy here, we see the median overall survival, and uh, 12 months overall survival is improved compared to placebo. But important to know that there were no responses seen, or the responses were the same for remisurumab as with placebo. And the median uh, time on uh, and the median time on ramucirumab was relatively uh, low in terms of the benefit of 1.4 months. Uh, and uh, again, more of a pr proof of principle that it's a, in patients with relatively well-behaving tumors that this is likely a disease-stabilizing approach. For progression-free survival uh, is uh, is listed here. So this was. The, this was overall survival, I misspoke earlier, and this is progression-free survival of 0 0.8 months benefit, and the 12, when, uh, when the survival is, uh, ben uh, is measured in weeks, you know, it's 40% uh, versus 16%. Again, more of a disease-stabilizing approach in those uh, tumors. Well, how does it compare with cytotoxic chemotherapy? And here are the summary of the data for ramucirumab, docetaxel, docetaxel or irinotecan, uh, and the irinotecan uh, trials uh, uh, that were available up to date. And so you can see here the median overall survival shown in yellow for romacirumab is 5.2 months, docetaxel similar, and uh, docetaxel or irinotecan. So overall, if you uh, pick the right patients, and this should be the message, if you select the right patients that romacirumab could be appropriate for in monotherapy, the overall survival benefit and uh, the expected overall survival is similar to with uh, some of these cytotoxic drugs. Well, the RAINBOW study combined ramucirumab with paclitaxel compared to with paclitaxel with placebo and in one-to-one -one randomization compared these two approaches. 
And here, the six months overall survival, 72% for the combination versus 57 with monotherapy, with median overall survival of 9.63 months versus 7.36 months. So you see uh, more of a biologic effect here. Uh, but again, uh, although the curves separate, they, they ultimately cross, and we're certainly uh, although it's a statistically significant difference, the median benefit is relatively modest, 2.3 months, which is what we tend to see with biologic agents in this disease. Progression-free survival and response rates are also improved, so this is a, definitely a positive study. Response rate of 28% versus 16%, with median overall uh, progression-free survival of 22 months at 9 months, which is where you know, this is a, the biggest difference uh, versus 10 months. And uh, the adverse events in general are expected to be related to VEGFR2 inhibition, which is bleeding and hemorrhage. Uh, there is a risk of perforation, and actually updated data uh, and safety data for this combination leads us to believe that you should probably avoid remosuramab in patients who've had recent stents placement, because the risk of perforation in the setting of stent placement or feeding, recent feeding tubes can be quite uh, substantial. And uh, where would we go with this? Um, you know, generally, the combination, in my view, a combination of VEGFR2 inhibitors with other biologic agents is probably uh, where the field will move. Uh, and I'll show you some of the data uh, to support this. So this is uh, shifting gears uh, to uh, bevacizumab, which is another VEGF inhibitor. And a trial that was uh, done through Dana-Farber by P Peter Enzinger looking at first-line chemotherapy, capecitabine oxaliplatin, in combination with bevacizumab and trastuzumab. Uh, you saw a very nice presentation regarding role of HER2 inhibition in gastric cancer, which is now a standard of care. But certainly, we were not curing patients with this uh, approach. And due to co occurring alterations, the duration of trastuzumab based therapy and the median progression free survival at, on the TOGA trial is approximately 6.7 months. So, uh, trying to improve on this uh, combination with HER2 and VEGF inhibition in first line setting could be considered. And this is a small, uh, relatively small phase two, single uh, center and single arm. And so the 36% uh, uh, of patients were enrolled with major response of 81%, with 75% of patients progression-free at six months, uh, with uh, median overall survival of 26 months. Certainly hypothesis generating and should be explored in further studies. It's difficult to explore a drug that has been negative, and so we're actually exploring combination with ramasuramab with trastuzumab uh, in first-line setting in this uh, disease. And then Ian's data uh, that was recently presented at ASCO, uh, again, uh, raises the possibility of using VEGF inhibition in combination with anti-PD-1 agents. This is combination of ramasuramab with pembrolizumab in second-line G-junction and gastric tumors. And uh, once again, we see responses irrespective of PDL1 status. Uh, and uh, some of these responses are quite durable and dramatic in pre-treated, heavily pre-treated patient population. Uh, of patients assessed, uh, accessible for disease response, 57% experienced disease uh, decrease in target lesions, uh, which is uh, quite impressive, although preliminary. And this is what, what's interesting. You just saw uh, Dan's presentation on prembolizumab in pdl one positive patients uh, in first-line setting monotherapy. Here we have pdl one irrespective of pdl one positivity, combination of ramosuramab with pembrolizumab in first-line setting. And once again, the waterfall plot uh, shows activity, uh, but the majority of patients with deep responses were pdl one positive. So the combination of uh, ramosuramab and pembrolizumab may build on uh, the pembrolizumab monotherapy, particularly in patients uh, that we're sparing from chemotherapy or considering not giving chemotherapy to. This is the survival, the progression-free survival and overall survival. Uh, again, uh, uh, this is in second-line setting. The, and when you're looking at immunotherapy data, the median survivals uh, can be quite uh, unimpressive and uh, what we're looking at also is the curve, uh, the end of the curve, and for this data, it can, it's a bit immature, so it's hard to make any uh, predictions, but looking at the median overall survival, certainly some patients stay on for treatment and benefit uh, from the therapy for quite some time. 
Uh, and this is for in first line setting once again, the six months progression free survival of 35%. Uh, although this data is quite immature, so we would have to wait for the, for the maturity of the data. So in conclusion, we know that VEGFR2 inhibition is important in the, uh, the biology and metastatic potential of esophageal and gastric adenocarcinomas. In combination with chemotherapy in second line, it's relatively standard and used, and now we're moving toward first-line therapy. The rainfall data from the first-line therapy, uh, the press release uh, indicated that it may, uh, met its primary endpoint of progression-free survival. The combination strategies that are currently being explored are a combination of remisurumab with pembrolizumab, remisurumab with trastuzumab in uh, both first- and second-line settings.